This is 7 National News and in our top story. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of Dubai's Executive Council, issued a number of resolutions today, appointing a number of officials in various posts. Resolution number 29 for 2012 appoints Khalid Ali Ahmed bin Zayed Al Falasi as the Assistant Director General of Dubai Municipality for International Affairs and Partnership. Resolution number 36 for 2012 appoints Dr. Mukhir Kami Al Khalili, Al Ra Ali Rashid Al Ketbi, and Amal Mohammed bin Adi as members of the Board of Trustees for the Dubai School of Government. Meanwhile, resolution number 31 for 2012 sets up a committee to name the members of a special committee on developing economic activities in Dubai. The Crown Prince also issued resolution number 34 for 2012 on compliance to the standards of ambulance services, as well as resolution number 37 for 2012 on fees paid by higher education institutes operating in the free zones. With just a week to go, all attention will be on the UAE's capital, when thousands of officials from key energy and water markets arrive for Abu Dhabi's Sustainability Week. Running for its sixth consecutive year, the World Future Energy Summit will be hosted alongside the International Water Summit, running from the 15th to the 17th at the National Exhibition Centre. Event directors stated that water and energy are two of the world's most valuable resources. However, the global population of over 7 billion are over-consuming about 50% more reserves than what the Earth is currently producing. To tackle unsustainable behaviour, a new set of federal policies, which will develop existing ones, will be introduced by four high-level ministerial panels. Hosted by Mazda Institute, the three-day event will also address pressing challenges including climate change, energy security and poverty eradication. It's certainly not going to be easy. Of course, trying to persuade consumers to, to change their habits is, uh, is not straightforward. And that's, uh, those policy issues are things that are very definitely on the agenda for, uh, for International Water Summit and the World Future Energy Summit. Changing consumer behaviour using um, policy, uh, tariff, tra uh, tax and transfer are key issues which will be discussed uh, on the panels. Per capita consumption of both water and energy is extremely high in the Middle East. Uh, we know that we're about uh, twice the world's average. We're right at the top of the list. And that's for two reasons. Um, firstly, obviously there's not a lot of rain, so we, we use a lot of water. But also to purify and desalinate water takes a lot of energy. So um, thermal desalination, where you boil the seawater and then condense it, is a, is a very energy-intensive process, as well as, of course, the, um, the air conditioning because it gets very hot in the summer. So, uh, so it can be quite a, quite a tough region to, uh, to live in comfortably. So, of course, we do place a lot of uh, demand for both energy and water, and that's why um, Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week is here. 150 people were killed and almost 1,000 were run over in road accidents during the first 10 months of 2012 across the Emirates. The number of deaths of pedestrians is almost double the 83 that were recorded in 2011. And off the back of this, the Abu Dhabi police have launched the first road safety campaign for pedestrians in 2013. According to a local paper, a statement confirmed that almost 30% of injuries during the first 10 months of 2012 were caused by people being hit by vehicles. This has sparked more harsh penalties for jaywalkers who will be fined 200 dirhams per violation, while motorists who do not give priority to pedestrians on zebra crossings will also be fined 500 dirhams and given six black points. Free vaccines against cervical cancer will be available for Emirati women between the ages of 18 and 26 in the next two months. The vaccines are a part of a campaign to reduce the rate of cervical cancer among women in the capital, where in 2011 alone, 61 new cases were diagnosed and 30% of the patients were Emirati. Senior health officials at the Health Authority Abu Dhabi announced on Monday that in the absence of urgent preventative measures, they expect the incidence of this type of cancer to rise within the UAE over the next few years. They added that women therefore need to understand that a simple vaccine can protect them from the disease for life. 
Figures show that cervical cancer is the third most common cancer in women worldwide. And in the UAE, it affects 7.4 per 100,000 women. Dubai unveiled its latest addition to the restaurant scene today with the opening of an exotic Indian eatery by celebrity Indian master chef Sanjeev Kapoor. The award-winning options restaurant by Sanjeev Kapoor opened its second restaurant in Dubai today at the Mothen Pick Hotel in Deera. Speaking at the opening, Kapoor stated that the hotel is an excellent venue due to its high occupancy levels and that Deera and the neighbouring Burdi Bai is also ideal, having established communities that are very knowledgeable and appreciative of Indian and Asian cuisine. The menu will feature Kapoor's hand-picked and specially crafted signature dishes. Um, at options uh, here in Movin Pick Hotel in Dera, uh, the dishes that we have, uh, it's, a, it's a mix of uh, uh, different uh, cuisines from different parts of India, primarily uh, from nor north of India. Uh, so we have uh, kebabs, uh, and uh, since in India most people like uh, chicken as a meat, uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, chicken kebabs. Uh, so we, we have chandi kaliya, we have. Uh, uh, Murgangar Bedgi, uh, which works uh, very well. Then we have uh, our all-time uh, favorite Sham Savera, which is uh, there. And our uh, number one seller in some sense, uh, Dal Lala Musa, which uh, I think uh, people cannot do without. At the opening this morning, Kapoor also gave some advice to those who love food and who love to cook. Uh, people who uh, love to cook, uh, I think uh, they first uh, should uh, uh, learn to love food. Uh, uh, and uh, with that comes the appreciation part. So no matter whose food uh, it is, uh, try and find out something good in that and appreciate that. Uh, because uh, what I've seen, most people are more critical of food, not appreciative. So I would uh, give one advice uh, that uh, start being appreciative of food, then you will start seeing that uh, food grows on you and you'll become a better cook. And up next we will have the day's business news.